these veneers are cut sequentially from the same log so that basically you just have layer after layer uh, that started out you know a growing adjacently in the board. Uh, now so the first thing I do when I receive the veneer is I tape the ends to make sure that handling doesn't cause cracks to go all the way up through the veneer and then I sequentially number the layers so that later on I can keep track of where these layers are for book matching and slip matching purposes. Now the big decision here is do I slip match the veneer where I basically take a layer and just slide it over adjacent to the other layer so that uh, I'm looking at the the same face uh, if you will from each uh, piece that is uh, you know the the board uh, top as it was sliced is the top of each of these pieces or do I book match Book matching is where the veneer sheets are sliced from the log and then the top sheet is flipped over so that the face you're seeing is actually the face that was touching the face of the veneer sheet below it. These faces are mirror images of each other. Now normally the mirror image idea makes a whole lot of sense. In this case though with curly maple you have to take in an extra consideration and that is the uh, curls on the wood are a result of fibers undulating kind of wave-like along the length of the board. And so when you see uh, a certain dark line on the face, that may mean that the fiber has undulated in one direction, but its mirror image on this other sheet of veneer is going to have that fiber undulating in the opposite direction. So instead of appearing as a dark line, it would appear as a white line. The question is, can you match up these two pieces uh, and make it so that these light and dark lines don't look distracting? And in this case, with this particular veneer, I've tried both methods. I've tried the slip matching and I've tried the book matching. And I've decided the book matching is the way to go. If necessary, while I'm doing the actual glue up, I can shift these pieces longitudinally just slightly so that white lines line up with white lines if that's what seems to look best. I don't think you can be too careful when working with veneer. It's brittle, fragile, expensive, and limited in supply because all these sheets are taken from the same log so they're matched. So I've taken a lot of time and carefully marked out where the cuts are going to be in the veneer stack so that I don't waste any, but more importantly, so I have enough veneer to do the whole project. Now there's various ways of cutting veneer. I decided to try for this uh, particular uh, veneer using a paper cutter. And I did an experiment on uh, the end of uh, one of my scrap pieces. And it makes a nice clean cut. So I'm going to go ahead and use a paper cutter to cut my veneer sheets to length. And there's one sheet. Now I've carefully numbered the tops of the sheets and I'll keep these stacks in order so that later on when I go to book match these on the actual panels, the book, book match will be perfect. I've got all the sheets of veneer cut to length. Now, because I'm going to book match the sheets, I need to uh, make sure that one edge uh, of, of each veneer sheet is very straight. Uh, book matching, uh, I just ran this, this uh, uh, set through my jig here, which I'll explain in a minute, but book matching is when you take the sheets, you flip one over, and they go together like this on the uh, substrate, and you get a book matched look. So it's important for this edge to be very straight. So uh, in a book uh, named uh, The Guide to Veneering and Inlay by Jonathan Benson, 
Uh, he talks about making a jig here where you can clamp all your veneer sheets together and have a small amount of uh, protruding that you can then run across the jointer. So these edges are fairly straight to begin with, but I've made this jig. It's just a couple of pieces of poplar with a couple of strong backs of poplar and a couple of big bolts going through the ends. Big nuts on here I can tighten up with a wrench. And I can take this and I can put it on my jointer and just run it through and make sure that that one edge is very straight. process joins the uh, pieces of veneer together in the book match so that they later can be glued to the substrate. Now what I do is I take a pair of veneer sheets, I check the numbering to make sure that I didn't get mixed up earlier, and I go ahead and try to match up the uh, figure. Like I explained earlier, the curly figure needs to be carefully matched up so that the light and dark lines uh, are fairly harmonious. And then uh, once I got the match up about right, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, put a piece of tape temporarily on here. Now, the next step is to take this very thin veneer tape. It comes in a roll. Stuff is extremely thin. It's got a water soluble uh, adhesive on here and I'm going to tape uh, the joint together much like stitching and uh, then I'm going to take an iron set to medium heat and dry the tape and the, uh, the tape as it dries will help pull the joint together. Shrink, the tape shrinks a little bit. It'll help pull the joint together and I'll end up with a piece like this that is uh, stitched up and ready to be trimmed for uh, applying to the, uh, to the uh, substrate. I'm using a little uh, desk moistener, the kind that uh, offices use to moisten stamps. Just go ahead and wet a little piece, pull the veneer together very tightly, apply the tape, and then I'll go ahead and I'll move down a few inches. Be careful not to uh, let the veneer uh, sheets overlap. They're supposed to butt together tightly. And I'll just go ahead and apply tape all the way down the line. Now all the short pieces are applied. Now I'll take one long piece and go all the way down the center of the joint. The nice thing about this veneer tape is that after the glue up is all done, all I have to do is moisten the outside of the tape and I can peel it off and it doesn't do any damage to the veneer. The tape I'm using right now is solid. You can also get this tape perforated, uh, and I'll explain in a minute what that would be used for. But first, let's get to the ironing. Now, I want to be careful. Use a medium heat. All I'm trying to do is dry out the tape and get it to shrink. And I don't want to burn the veneer, and I don't want to um, cause the veneer to deform in shape. Heat will actually cause a uh, the veneer to change in shape, uh, in shape slightly, in dimension. And I don't want that to happen. I'm just trying to dry out the, dry out the tape. piece is all uh, done. I've got a little extra tape down here. I'll just slice that off with a, with a knife. And 
this is the top side of the uh, sheet. Uh, the bottom side of the sheet is what will be glued to the substrate. Um, and here's where, where it's important to understand that we're only taping the side that does not receive the glue. Therefore, we get good glue coverage over this entire back, which is against the substrate. If I ever have a veneer glue up where I have to tape the side that is against the substrate, there is perforated veneer tape. It's much thinner than what I'm using, and it has holes in it to allow glue to contact the veneer. But in this case, we don't need to do that. We're just going to go ahead and use the heavier uh, veneer tape. It's still very thin, and this will go into the press with the, subst with the substrate. I've taped up a number of uh, panels of uh, veneer, and uh, of course I'd already cut them to the correct length. Uh, a little bit oversized, always cut oversized so that later on you can trim the entire glued up panel. But now I'm uh, cutting to width, which means I'm basically ripping the veneer, uh, you know, with the grain. And so uh, what I've done is I've uh, marked where the cut should be, I've uh, put down a board uh, to cut on, and I'm going to use a veneer saw that I've sharpened. Now this, uh, this saw has little teeth on it, which uh, I sharpened to be knife-like. So instead of uh, where a normal saw, uh, the way a normal saw cuts, this cuts more like a knife. And I've got a straight edge, a particle board that will not uh, dull the teeth. Uh, the, the, the saw can ride along it. And all I do, and by the way, I also marked, uh, I numbered these panels again so that when they're glued up, uh, uh, I can identify these edges uh, with the panel because these edges are eventually going to become uh, the edge veneer on the edge of the panels. So I'm going to saw by holding down my straight edge, uh, putting the saw against there, and then just pulling the saw towards me. And there we go.